want to get rid of fibroid tumors or um, diabetes for both women and men, obesity, stress, whatever the issues are, um, there's a way to heal thyself in nature. But what I'm talking about is the supporting tools that have been used to reach a, a maybe over a million people by now. I started this journey of wellness when I was age of 17. I was an extremely sick child, a teenager. I had um, arthritis, I had um, eczema from head to toe, I had chronic asthma, hay fever, allergies, PMS as a woman, and I was able to heal myself holistically and naturally. It took two 21-day cycles, and I talk about my beginnings in my first book. I've written four books, so I'm going to just, and from the books of healing myself, other books came out of that. So I'm just going to uh, show you the first book, and the first book is Heal Thyself and Health and Longevity, and this book was once a green book, I was just mentioned today, you read from a green book, and that was written about 21 years ago, and it was not, some of you are coming as wanting to be writers, or you are a writer, who's a writer in here, you a writer? wants to be a writer, okay? Um, well, I don't consider myself a writer. I consider myself a visionary, one who sees what needs to be done, and as a result, in order to reach the people, I had to write. I had to be a channel to receive the writing. So some start off saying, I want to be a writer, and others saying, I want to find, I, I'm a great writer, but I don't know where's my, what's my theme, what am I going to move with? Um, so I knew what my theme was. And the writing was the vehicle to reach the people. So uh, it's been able to reach many, many homes as we saw. So Heal Thyself for Health and Longevity. All the books are self-help books, and that was my beginnings. And it teaches one how to take um, responsibility for their wellness and take wellness into their own hands. The second book that was written uh, in 2000, now this, let me just start by, Heal Thyself was considered a grassroots book completely. And a grassroots book is a book that you may write yourself and then publish yourself. You believe in it, you don't have a house, a publishing house to pick it up, but you believe in it so you begin the process. So I remember making 200 copies. That was like big, I said, wow. I made 200 copies and those 200 copies, I went downtown Brooklyn and I went door to door in a bag with 12 copies just going to bookstores, going to health food stores. Will you carry my book? Will you carry my book? Well, I bumped into, nothing's by um, happenstance, but I, I walked into a store called A and B at the time. Mm. It, was a, it was a bookstore. They never published a book, but they were book uh, sellers. And they came off the street, so they was like one step up. They used to be on the street vending, and then they graduated to having their own store, their own storefront. And I came at the time of their graduation. We were both graduating. I came in as a, a, a beginning writer. I went in there and then I left the book. They said, you know, they were interested. They called me back. They said, they'll take 100 copies, almost passed out. <gasps> That's half of my inventory. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have hit gold. So um, I was excited. They came and got my books. Then they called me a week later and said, we're going to have to take, bring your books back. I said, why? They said, because it wasn't perfect binding. You know when you have something that can crack after about a month of you opening it up and it cracks? It had to be perfect binding. So they said, you know what, maybe you might consider us being your publisher. Now they didn't know about publishing at that time and I knew less about it, but we bonded. And so they put the book out and so I would say from that company, I got my first, uh, what I think that, four figures. <laughs> You know, from them, and so that, and it went out, and it went out. Thousands of copies went out. That one book got my children through college. Wow. And you know what? And both of them went to Howard University, so you know what's what's not cheap. And that means the dorm, traveling, being, you know, paying for the tuition, and their their books and everything came from these two books. I got my royalty check twice a year. And I would give whatever my royalty check was, I give it right over to the school. <laughs> and when they got when they graduated, they didn't have a bill. So that is a legend. And it's interesting because they're in the book. I put the images of, of children in the book because we, there was no African American, Caribbean, uh, Latino children's faces in books of wellness. Not coming up through the '60s. So I was eternal. Once I had, if I was going to write a book, they had to have little children that look like themselves to encourage them to heal. 
and I see the babies now, and they look at me like, oh, they're like little guppies when they see me because they know their faces are in that book from other little children. So I feel really happy about that. The next book came out of, um, well, the first book came out of uh, Bob Law, uh, radio personality, he pushed me to write the book. He said, you're talking about wellness, and you're on this roll, you're excited about the book. We need to be able to read it and go over it and have a text. So I so I just said, okay, it was very hard to write a book. I didn't know the editing process. And I and a friend of mine, so we're still together, I just saw it tonight, uh, Jerry Ann Scott. She became my editor. She knew how to organize my thoughts. She knew my intentions. So she was able to, to hear what I was saying. She's, a, she's an educator, she's an English teacher, and she'd organize all my thinking for me. And that was so helpful. Um, in 2000, another book came out. And that book is um, Sacred Woman. A Guide to Healing the Feminine Body, Mind, and Spirit. And this book is actually to help. I'm, I'm, I'm accompanied by my granddaughter. I'll tell you about her in a minute. <laughs> She's in one of the books. Um, and this book came out through the majors. This was from a small, from a grassroots uh, personal uh, publishing, private publishing, uh, self publishing to a small publishing house, Heal Thyself. And then it went. Several years later, 2000, it's, this book was published by Random House. And Random House is the, one of the largest publishing houses in the world. And so it was like a quantum leap jump. I have been teaching women's workshops, classes, healing sessions with women in circles for 20 years before this book came into being. But as this book came through, um, it was workshops, classes, and seminars, but it's really based around women teaching women how to empower themselves from all the spiritual realms, all from Muslim women to Christian women to um, to Yoruba women to Kemetic women to women from all the four directions. So this book is based on ancient Nile Valley teachings with the present woman of today and how to resolve some of your issues with relationships, with uh, states of minds, with self-worth, um, with um, healing different in every aspect of your life. So. This book is that, that birthing process. Then, about four years ago, um, I went back to self-publishing. Oh my gosh, I almost passed out. It, took, it takes a lot of money to self-publish, particularly when you've been out for a while. You want to have an excellent cover. You want the artwork perfect. You want the illustration well. You, you know, you have to do marketing. It was thousands and thousands of dollars, and I had to really work. My nine to five, five to 10 work was to get this book out. And that book is The City of Wellness, Restoring Your Health of the Seven Kitchens of Consciousness. So this book is about food as medicine. There's over 250 recipes in the book, and it's based on seven kitchens of consciousness. So that came through from live food kitchens to uh, raw, which is raw food, to uh, uh, emerald green kitchens where you take mostly chlorophyll to boost and protect the immune system, to fasting kitchen, to the healer's kitchen, to the uh, liberation kitchen when you want to help others and you work with groups of people. Well, I give you ways and means in which to use food as medicine. Okay, so that's what that book is about. And that book now started to move all because it needed more support and it became a small, it joined with a small publishing house. And that small publishing house was was the, was the house that I needed to continue to keep the book on the shelf. Because you can get the book out, and then you have to keep it on the shelf. And you got to keep it moving. And you have to continue to market it. So I needed some capital to keep the book alive. So then I had to share in, in the profits, which is fine. Because the book has to stay alive. Because you can have a... I, I remember speaking to Dick Gregory, because his book is what started me on my path of wellness. Um, Dick Gregory, Cooking with Mother Nature. And reading that book, it really gave me a vision of possibly being able to heal myself. Now, he doesn't try to push that book um, now. He doesn't really promote it or talk about it. I, I probably talk about it more than he does because it's hard to keep the books alive after so many years. Then finally, we have Overcoming an Angry Vagina. Journey to Moon Wellness, and everyone when I say the name, when I say the name of the book, they say, "What? How did you say?" Okay, and this is Overcoming an Angry Vagina, subtitled Journey to Moon Wellness, and both books are um, Heal City of Wellness and Overcoming is is published by African World Books, 
out in for Baltimore, uh, Brother Nanti. He believed, he always asked me, he said, whenever you get another book queen, please, you know, don't always go to the big boys and the big folks. Could you come to us, you know, and we will get your book out and we will support it and love your book and, and nurture it. Because you can have a book in the majors and it doesn't get a lot of support, but it's in the majors. The majors might give you clout to get in colleges, you know, to move around a bit more, but it may not sell as many books as even a small press because they may be focused on the small books that really will do the groundwork that needs to be done. So again, it's self-publishing is one way, small house publishing is another, mainstream publishing, and then you may convert at any point from um, self-publishing to the small house or to the larger houses. To get to a larger house, I had a, a book agent who said, gave me her business card at an event, and she said, whenever you're ready to publish, let me know. I didn't even know what a book agent was until years later, and I realized they are the ones who go to the larger houses, and they will come with a package to promote the book. And so she would then have to ask certain things of me. She would need the first four chapters. She had to first say, I want this book. I submitted the book, two books to her. I submitted Sacred Woman to her and The Voice of the Womb. And she was open to publish, to look for a publishing house for both. Random House picked up the book. They took Sacred Woman. They said, we're not going to take Voice of the Womb. I said, okay. But what they did is they absorbed some of the information from The Voice of the Womb into the first chapter of Sacred Woman. So that left the overcoming book on the side for 12 or 14 years. I had to let it go because I had to go to where the support was going to come from. So that was my process. Um, just a few steps in terms of how I receive writing. And I don't and I don't really talk to writers on how they go through it. I don't talk to visionaries too much. This is maybe a, a beginning of a new way. The first step for me was first establishing what is your concept. Well, people came up to me and asked me to write books. It wasn't my idea to write um, The City of Wellness, um, but I wrote it because people kept asking from me. Uh, Sega Woman was um, through um, Brother Oswald from A&D. He asked me, can you write this book that you have a little, it was like a little pamphlet that I was teaching women's trainings, and he asked me, well, can you make this into a book, Sega Woman? I said, oh, okay, no, I can't. It was so hard writing to heal myself. Anyway, it took some time. I submitted. <laughs> And then another brother came from out of um, Washington, D.C. He was um, uh, supporting me in my, my work. He said, you have to write another book. You're as big as your latest hit or your latest album. Or your, I said, this is too much. I've, um, I've written two books. It's enough. And he said, no, we need another book from you. So I said, okay. And it, it became City of Wellness. Overcoming was something that I walked around with for 14 years saying that I have to write this book because I, the women are coming to me because they don't want to have a hysterectomy. Women called me up this morning. I was, I, was so, I was so glad to say I have a book just for you. She says, I'm 52 years old. Um, they give me Lupron. I'm being given Lupron. And I'm told that I should go ahead and get a hysterectomy because I'm also bleeding profusely. I said, well, you can use clay pack and castor oil packs and invert the body and cut back on some of the heavy meats and cut out the dairy. And you get a new womb. And I have it all written in Overcoming and Angie Vagina Journey to Womb Wellness. They're formulas. So I was happy to say, I'm going to send you this book out today. And I sent it out to her today. So for me, it's. Uh,